Charlie Baltimore was this close to joining the likes of Ashanti and Ja Rule to become one of Murder, Inc.'s biggest stars in the late 90s to early 2000s. After all, she seemingly did everything right. She formed relationships with some major power players in the industry, worked on her writing, and put together a full album. Unfortunately, it was never officially released. So, what happened? Rapper and television personality Tiffany Lane, better known by her stage name Charlie Baltimore, was born on August 16, 1974, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Her fair complexion is courtesy of her biracial heritage. Her father was white with German ancestry, and her mother is African American. Charlie said coming from a mixed family wasn't easy. Even though she grew up mainly in Philly, her mother did move the family to Jackson, Tennessee at one point. Now being in the Deep South, she dealt with her fair share of racial tension. After going back to Philly, where Charlie spent her teenage years, she had a front row seat to witness the effects of the crack epidemic emerge in the 80s on the East Coast. She also became a mom at this time at the age of 15 to a daughter named India. She finished high school a year early, then went on to junior college. She parlayed her associate's degree into a career as a paralegal. In a 2023 interview with Vlad TV, she said that she actually wanted to have a child at that time in her life and felt mature enough to handle the responsibility. Now though, she realizes that she probably should have waited since the experience made her grow up very fast. Despite all that, Charlie was determined to make it. She blocked out all the naysayers telling her she would never amount to anything and really buckled down. Charlie's daughter's father had pretty much been out of the picture since his child was born, which was probably a good thing since, according to Charlie, he was physically abusive. The worst of it being him pushing her down the stairs when she was eight months pregnant. In 1995, she had another daughter by another man. Like her first baby daddy, he didn't bring much to the table either. So Charlie continued to do what she needed to do to support her children on her own. At this time, rapper The Notorious B.I.G., also known as Biggie Smalls, was blowing up. Charlie would end up crossing paths with him when he did a show in Philly that summer. After the show, she wanted to get a picture of him, but when she asked, he said he wanted to take a picture of her. They ended up taking quite a few photos of each other, and by the time the moment was over, he'd also gotten her phone number. Biggie made use of the digits when he called Charlie to invite her to a party in New York. She attended, they hung out, and that was that. While he continued to invite her to various events, they also maintained regular contact on the phone, getting to know each other on a strictly platonic level. That is, until he invited her out to Los Angeles, when he made his appearance on the Fox sitcom Martin. At that point, things turn romantic. She was quoted as saying the following about her beau in an interview. I guess the best way to describe him would be like Barry White. He could charm you out of anything, even your clothes. There was a slight issue with that though. Biggie was married. According to Charlie, he told her that him and his wife, R&B singer Faith Evans, were separated. Now, if you thought that since Big's career was on the rise, Charlie used her proximity to him to try to pop off her own career, you'd be wrong. While she did do some rapping in her teens, after she had her children, she put that on the back burner to focus on them. That all changed though when several months into her relationship with Big, she left him a voicemail of a rap verse that she'd written about the other women he was messing around with who'd left messages for him on his phone. It was like all these random girls on there saying all this stuff. So I wrote every girl's name down that I had from the voicemail and made like a whole rap, including all their names and shit. He told her that he loved what he heard, thought she had real talent, and encouraged her to continue honing her writing skills. In addition to the numerous other women Biggie was spending time with, unbeknownst to Charlie, he was also fostering a relationship with Lil' Kim, the only female member of Junior Mafia, the group he put together made up of his childhood friends. While both women had already crossed paths numerous times, they would get to share the same space in a professional capacity in the music video for Biggie's 1996 track featuring Junior Mafia called Get Money. As soon as the video came out, everyone couldn't help but notice Charlie's uncanny resemblance to Big's estranged wife. Charlie not only dressed like Faith, but also rocked her signature blonde tresses, causing people to believe that it was also an attempt at dissing Faith. According to Charlie though, that was not the case at all. 
She says her hair had already been blonde when Biggie started talking to her about the video. Then wanting her to appear in it, asked her to dye her hair dark. He never told her why, and Charlie was none the wiser that the request was his attempt to avoid the inevitable comparison to Faith. She says now, had she known, she would have changed it. Even though Faith and Biggie would eventually divorce, during this time, they were still on and off. Charlie and Biggie's relationship also functioned the same way. According to Big, it was during one of his on moments with Faith, which apparently coincided with an off moment with Charlie, that Faith wound up pregnant. Big wasn't even the one who eventually told Charlie, it was his mother. While I've been referring to Charlie as Charlie throughout this video, up to this point, she was actually still Tiffany. Charlie came about after a horrific car accident that nearly took her life, as well as Biggie's and Junior Mafia member Lil C's. While they were in a rental van driven by C's down a highway, he miscalculated a turn, causing the vehicle to flip over. All three were badly injured and required hospitalization. After Charlie was released, she would stop by to visit Big, who had a much longer recovery journey. To pass the time, they'd watch a lot of movies together. One of them was the 1996 action thriller, The Long Kiss Goodnight with Gina Davis. Her character was named Charlie Baltimore. Charlie really liked it, so Big said that she should use it as her stage name. A star in the often brutal world of gangster rap has been gunned down. This time it was notorious B.I.G. ABC's Anderson Cooper has the story. The rapper known as Biggie Smalls was shot several times as he sat in his Chevy Suburban early this morning outside the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. Smalls had been attending a party honoring winners of the Soul Train Music Awards, at which he made an appearance Friday night. What's up, Cali? After the shooting, Smalls was taken to Cedar sinai Medical Center, where he was pronounced dead. Following Biggie's death, film director, film producer, screenwriter, record producer, and music executive Lance on Rivera, who started his career by financing Biggie's Road to Stardom, signed Charlie to his label, Entertainment Records, through Epic Records. The song Money, off the soundtrack to the 1998 romantic comedy film Woo, would serve as her first single. Y'all already know that Charlie's in charge, weekly massage, platinum and gold cards. That same year, she also appeared on the remix to her label mate Cameron's hit song, Horse and Carriage. The following year, Charlie released Stand Up featuring Ghostface Killa. It reached number nine on the Hot Rap Singles chart. As her name continued to circulate around the music industry, Charlie also used her looks to land herself some modeling jobs. Despite her moderate success on the charts, Charlie wasn't enjoying it. She told Vlad she wasn't able to just be herself, since the powers that be at her label had their own version of how she should be. To add insult to injury, her first studio album titled Cold as Ice ended up not getting an official release after its promotional release in the summer of 1999. To this day, Charlie still doesn't understand why. What she did realize was that there were some shady things going on behind the scenes. As a result, she knew she had to get out. So she asked to be released from her contract, unsaid no, unless she paid him $1.5 million. Also at this time, Charlie was in communication with Irv Gotti, co-founder of Murder, Inc. Records. He'd also produced a couple of tracks that were scheduled to appear on her debut album, but never made it on. After she explained her situation to him, he did some investigative work and discovered that Un didn't even have a deal with Sony, who owns Epic. Charlie promptly joined Murder, Inc. in 2002. During this time, she made appearances on a bunch of other tracks, including Down Ass Bitch by Ja Rule, as well as Down For You, we Still Don't Give a F**k, and No One Does It Better, from Irv Gotti Presents the Ink. Then in 2003, she earned a Grammy Award nomination for Best Female Rap Solo Performance for her single, Diary, off her second unreleased album, The Diary You Think You Know. By that time though, Charlie and Irv's relationship had soured. Plus, rumor has it that he used the budget for some of his artists, Charlie included, to fund his drug use. Less than two years after she signed, she parted ways with Murder, Inc. She wasn't heard from again for several years. In 2013, Charlie updated her fans on what she'd been up to in an interview with Parlay Magazine. Even when I'm not in front of the camera, I am still working. Honestly, I prefer to be the one in the background getting things done. I am always writing, and in recent years, I have written for a number of people. I did take time off from recording. 
My daughter is a very successful model, so I devoted time as a parent to being on set with her when she was a minor starting out. At that time, I felt I had to make a choice, my career versus hers, and I did what any mother would do. I chose her best interest. In 2009, Notorious, the biographical drama film based on the life of the Notorious B.I.G. was released. Some of the people and his relationships with them that were featured were Sean Combs, Tupac Shakur, Lil Kim, and Faith Evans. There was no mention at all of Charlie. If you ask her about it though, she couldn't be more unbothered. Charlie put her music on full display again when she released a couple of mixtapes in 2012 and 2013, titled Natural Born Chronicles and Hard to Kill, respectively. As far as her relationship with Faith is concerned, she told the Jasmine brand in 2014, she's a sweetheart. We never had any beef. It's just that people misconstrue things and make things that they want to make, but she's an absolute sweetheart. When also asked about Lil' Kim, she said, as far as I'm concerned, it's a thing of the past. I don't have beef with anybody, especially if I'm not paying any attention, you know? Even though reality TV isn't really her thing, Charlie agreed to give it a shot because it was something she could do with her kids. Her first go at it was a limited series called Charlie Knows Best in 2018. It was released exclusively on Bossip.com. Then in 2019, she and her youngest daughter, Siani, appeared on WeTV's Growing Up Hip Hop.